you doing? Well, I'm doing just fine. I lied. I'm dying inside. Yeah, this episode broke me. A musical number at the beginning of the video slash a reference to an old vine so you can tell I'm in a severe amount of emotional distress. Anyway, hello everybody. Welcome back to our weekly Fruits Basket discussion video. Today we're talking all about episode 21. There was definitely. But before we get into it, I actually quickly want to tell you guys something cool about the channel. From now on, you'll see a little join button next to the sub button. That means you can join the channel as a member. You get a badge next to your name to let everybody know that you're part of the T-Squadron in the comments. And you get nifty little emotes that you can spam in chats for premieres and stuff like that. So if that sounds cool to you, it's a great way to help out the channel you get to join the t squadron and you get a badge next to your name it's super helpful if you're even considering it thank you very much but without further ado let's go ahead and get into this episode it's gonna be emotional okay i don't where hmm okay <laughs> okay you guys know that we don't talk about things um in order anymore we don't hit things like note for note for note that said, basically the whole episode has like every single shot worth talking about it. However, for the sake of my voice, I'm not gonna be doing that uh, because again, I threw out my voice a little while ago for those of you who forgot about that. Um, so instead, I'm just gonna be talking about significant moments to me so I might miss some things here and there because I feel like I'm definitely going to because the episode was like absolutely jam-packed with stuff um it's all about Yuki this week like all about Yuki and it confirms a lot of things that I always suspected but this week it's like everything you thought you knew yeah you did know you were right and it's like oh my god I was right but I can't even be happy that I'm right because to get there we had to get our hearts stomped on by Akito and the gang because of course we did it's such a brilliant episode it, it's such a good episode especially if, if Yuki if Yuki is your favorite which I feel like he's a lot of people's favorite or bare minimum in like the list of their top five favorite characters from Fruba because my god this cast is fantastic um but yeah like I feel like Yuki is definitely in a lot of people's top five so if you're a big Yuki fan oh my god this episode is going to break your heart and snap it in half like a Twix bar it's that serious. Um, so basically we're gonna be talking about Yuki's past, his present, and my guesses as an anime only on his future, on uh, his Mirai. Wow. <laughs> um, but I also want to uh, quickly address some of the symbolism that I noticed in this week's episode. There's a, definitely a lot, but the two that stood out the most to me, um, one being like a regular motif through the episode and then another one that I just felt like was great. Um, so the first being the flowers that you see throughout the episode. There's these, like, flowers on, uh, on a stand. I don't even remember what they were. I should have written down what they were. I feel like, like, I, f I feel like a fool for not addressing this. But, um, I assume the gang over at Thought Bubble will, pr will probably go into this a little bit more than I will. But, um, shoutouts to them, by the way. They're friggin' fantastic. Um, but the, the flowers throughout the episode, like, slowly, like, you see, like, petals falling off, and then eventually, like, you start to see them sort of wilt, and you can just see them slowly dying. This beautiful thing slowly dying because they're being treated poorly, right? Like, and that to me is such a symbol of Yuki, this, like, beautiful being, this beautiful creature. My boy! My precious boy! You know, he's beautiful, but he's being treated so poorly and it's literally killing him. And it's it's ha like he's wilting away in this in the Soma estate, you know? Like he's wilting away in the conditions that he finds himself in. And the flowers were a perfect metaphor for that throughout the episode. And the other big metaphor that I have to mention is the mirror shattering. Um, the mirror shattering is, is perfect. Like the idea, cause you see it like crack Yuki. Like when he's looking at his reflection, it cracks. And Yuki's just there, do, like, I'm not gonna do the Mulan thing. I was two seconds away from like, when will my reflection show, right? Like, it's basically that. Um, Cause he's just looking at the mirror and he's, you could tell like, like at first I was like, how did the mirror crack? Like, why did it break like that? But I think it's just like, like little Yuki just putting pressure on the mirror until it snaps, right? And you can tell it's, it, Yuki even says like, and in that moment, something in me burst. And that snapping was just Yuki finally breaking, right? Like the mirror cracking is to represent Yuki finally just snaps and he's like, I can't take this anymore. And he just bolts from the estate. It's a, gr it's, it's a really solid metaphor. Personally, I like the flower metaphor just a little bit better. Like the mirror metaphor is a little like dink, you know, it's a little on the nose. Um, but I thought the flower metaphor paired with the, the mirror metaphor was, was brilliant. Lots, lots of quality symbolism. Fruba always has moments like this where 
it really like emphasizes um it, it or rather it really like makes you pay attention to little things like i remember some folks being like oh you're paying too much attention to the cinderella stuff do you first of all that's such an insult to my girl do you really think do you really think that takia sensei would put anything into fruits basket if it didn't at least have some kind of significance especially if she's pointing it out and really drawing attention to it you fool you fool of course it means something fruits basket is jam-packed with visual symbolism if you're if you want to assume that it means nothing and it just means surface level stuff that's fine but don't even come at me with that shit. <laughs> like don't even try to come at me with that yes we read into things way too much i hear on this channel but um, with Fruits Basket, I don't really think it's reading too far into it. I think it's reading just enough. But there has been too much happiness in this video. Too much joy. We must ruin that now by talking about Yuki's past. Oh, God. Um, where do I even start? I, um, hmm. Um, I, I don't even know where to begin. Everything about, let's actually start with Yuki being basically sold off. To the somas right Let, let's start there this like bright-eyed yuki is being praised for being the rat zodiac oh my god it's so great as we find out later um being the the rat zodiac is the greatest and the closest to god right as akito points out and and yes i have to say it like that but as we find out the the rat zodiac is closest to god so everybody's like oh wow like like it's such it must be such an honor blah 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 but yuki's he's just a lad here right he's just a young young lad so he he has no like recollect like he has no conscious like realization of this fact he just thinks he's you know he just thinks he's a kid um and he is god damn it like he, he happens to be like he does he is the rat zodiac i get that but he's he's just a boy you know like just let him he, he was not emotionally prepared for what the hell was about to happen. And you know who else isn't prepared? This old woman. This old bat who I have been, like, hating on ever since they started, like, giving her more scenes. I hate this woman. Like, I really hate this woman. Like, th th like the fact that she goes, like, oh, like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Like, it must be such an honor. The bond they share. <sighs> this lady, like, listen, I get it. She has no idea. Right, like I, I had always thought, like, why is she so, like, she's so hell bent on like Akito this, Akito that. She has no clue, but she really doesn't. Like, I always thought that she's like just like cruel, but it's more that she's just blind to what Akito has become, right? Because at the time she, and she doesn't even see it yet. Because at the time Akito, like, we'll, we'll get into this, but Akito's still like Akito's still a jackass, you know, 100 percent. But she's not, a, like, like this old woman, she's not aware yet that Akito is going to become a nightmare. And that Akito is already a dick, you know what I mean? Like, that Akito is already a jerk. Like, this, this old woman doesn't see it that way quite yet. But even still, the fact that she says, like, oh, and the older ones cried too when they met. What a bond they share. Oh my god, are you serious? Like, you saw multiple children cry when they see Akito, and you think that's a good thing? Right? Don't get me wrong, there's definitely tears of joy, that is a thing, but ain't no tears of joy to be found here, dog. Like, this is all bad, and you're a bad person. <laughs> like, 100% that old woman, I can understand in the early stages, but when Akito becomes a monster and she's still spouting this shit years later in present time, screw this old lady. And Yuki's mom's no better, by the way. Like, Yuki's mom straight up slaps him when she when she finds that Yuki wasn't, like, standing with Akito. But at the same time, like, with her, it's like, okay, we already established that you were a piece of shit at this point in time. And his mom is now trying to make up for it. It's gonna take a hell of a lot of work. But at least with, with Yuki's mom, we see that she's attempting to make an effort, you know? But man, when she slapped him, I was like, Oh, I could slap you. I could slap you right back right now. Oh my God. But we got to talk about the, the, the God in the room. <laughs> we got to talk about Akito. I, I always knew that I hated Akito, but like, I always, and I always knew eventually we would see that weird painting scene. Right, like I knew it, w it was all leading to this moment. Like at some point, we were gonna get the revelation of what the hell was up with that weird flashback that Yuki keeps seeing, with Akito like going crazy, painting shit. Right, I'm like, okay, we'll get there one day. And a lot of people in the comments have said like, you'll understand Akito one day. 
but it's unlikely you'll ever forgive Akito one day. So it's like, yeah. After seeing this, like, we established that, like, Akito was always a jerk. Like, Akito absolutely snapped at one point and became even crazier. Um, but, like, when, when Yuki's coughing, Akito's like, stop that! It's so annoying! I'm like, bruh! Shut the fuck up! He's... He's just coughing. For God's sakes, he's he's frail. He's gonna cough. Why are you being a dick? All right? Like, so in that moment, I'm like, okay, so you always sucked. Like, you were always terrible. But you also likely had some shit happen to you. And we keep addressing these other, like, members of the, 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 the like, the high chancellors of the Soma estate. These other, like high members like these other like top tier oh my god holy shit people likely akito's like family right like the heads of the estate we keep talking about the heads of the of the family estate so my guess is that they put pressure on akito and that pressure eventually made akito snap one day right and listen i get that but to turn around and be horrible horrible to everyone around you no. And, like, the levels to which Akito has been horrible, it's gonna take a miracle for me to ever, ever forgive. Ever. But, I can grow to understand, I think, one day. Maybe. But as of this moment in time, <laughs> this moment, on this day, Tuesday, August the 25th of 2020, this moment in time that I am recording this video. Akito sucks. I would punch Akito in the face. I would kick Akito off a cliff. I would throw Akito, Akito into a mountain of lava like I was part of the Mishima Zaibatsu. If you don't know what that reference is, you need to play more Tekken and oh my God, I hate Akito. I hate, <laughs> I hate, I am so filled with hate. The things that Akito says. The things that Akito says, like when he starts, we, when we finally get the painting scene and like, you need to be pit, you need to be just like me. You need to be pitch black too. I'm like, oh my God, go shop at Hot Topic, you edgy fool. Right? And like, just like, no, we're nothing alike. I'm not useless. Like, Akito, please just, just stop. Just stop. Just stop. I just, I'm actually getting lightheaded. <laughs> just... Like, in my notes, I just have that quote followed by, here we go. <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, like, just stop. And the fact that, like, we see that Akito repeats these words, as, as Yuki says, these pitch black words, just nails that, burns that into him day after day, every day, that eventually my boy begins to believe that. <laughs> I'm actually mad. And what's, what kills me is that's Takuya Sensei's friggin' arts. That's their skill. Is that you know this is a story. You know that this is fake. It is fiction. But I burn with hate as though it's real. <laughs> like, that's just it. I am mad as though these were real people, and that's Takuya Sensei's skill. There's a lot of series that I can think of, even some that I haven't seen, like the Monogatari series. I know, I'm sorry, I haven't seen Monogatari. Um, but there's some series that I know have this incredible skill to write characters in a way that they almost feel like real people. And that to me is like series where characters are number one, even characters that I hate, you know, and characters that I love. If you can write them where they're real people, that's a series that I come to love. You'll notice if, if you go to my Annie list, which I really should start linking in the description. Uh, maybe I'll link it in the pinned comment. But if you go to my Annie list and you see my favorite shows, it's all shows where characters drive the story. The story doesn't drive the characters. Where the characters are so lovable and almost become like like people you know that it it just can that these characters just connect with you and characters like yuki and yes even akito um that that's what they do right they feel like i let me stress this too because people like sometimes get the wrong idea although i think fruits basket fans understand what i'm saying if you go to my favorite characters list akito's in there not because i love akito because i love to hate akito that's an incredible skill to write a character this hateable and detestable but 
when they show up on screen, it's always, oh god, what's gonna happen, right? That's how I feel about Akito. Even, like, cheapified baby Akito, right? Like, young Akito. Even then, I'm still like, what's gonna happen? Because you hate them so much, but you love to hate them. So when they're on screen, you're like, oh, you, you, right? That is the sign of a great character. And I do love to hate Akito, right? Like, it's not that I think Akito's poorly written, like, oh, I hate that character, they're the worst because I, I don't like the way that they're written or blah, blah, blah. No, it's that I hate that character because they're so well written that you're supposed to hate them. And what kills me is because I know this is how Takeo Sensei writes, that at some point, as I've said, I will probably come to understand why Akito is the way that they are. Like, that's what, that's what blows my mind. The fact that I will come to understand and maybe even God help me sympathize. Maybe. <laughs> that I'm a little bit unsure of because what they did to, to, to Yuki is, is just dis despicable. It's disgusting. Like, even when Yuki gets sick and Akito says these things like, Oh, are you going to die, Yuki? Oh, okay. It's like, bruh, even Akito talking about Kyo's mother's suicide as though it's something trivial and like almost laughing at it. Like, it's so disgusting. It just boggles the mind. Akito is drunk on this god power, right? Like, on this god key. Okay, no, he doesn't have god key, although Akito going Super Saiyan God would be kind of interesting. But just Akito just feels holier than thou. You know what? I bet... You know what? Maybe I shouldn't speculate, because every time I speculate, people are like, um, actually... But I almost wonder if it's that Akito is reinforcing this in himself. I almost wonder if Akito is reinforcing this, this idea that, no, I am great and I am better than you because they have to, because maybe the family estate, maybe the heads of the family are like, nah, you suck, You're like blah, blah, blah. That might be it. Honestly, that might be it. Like just this vicious cycle of trying to live up to expectations, you know? I, I bet you, maybe I shouldn't have said that. I'm gonna put it in the video anyway, because in case I'm right, I just want it known. <laughs> Because I had said for a while, you know what, let's actually get into the Kyo thing, because this, listen, I said this a few times, there's some shit that I said that I was like, I bet you it's this, and so there was some other anime only, so we're like, what, no way, and I was right. Now, Kyo, uh, Kyo and Yuki's first meeting, this tripped me out, because Yuki, he overhears that the cat Zodiac is like, like standing outside the window looking in, I'm like, god, poor Kyo. And I'm expecting Yuki to be, like, his usual Yuki self towards Kyo, right? Like, oof, what are you doing, baka? You know, just like that usual stuff. But Yuki walks out and sees Kyo for the first time. And instead of thinking, like, ugh, the cat spirit, he says, what a pretty orange color. And I, I literally just got chills <laughs> saying that out loud. And Yuki is, like, in awe of Kyo for a second, right? And Kyo, like, baby Kyo, though, he seemed very vindictive and he says some shit that oh i wish he didn't say because it was like the absolute worst time for yuki to hear that and kyo just says like i'll never forgive you and i hope you disappear right and this completely rattles a very fragile yuki and at that moment i had assumed anyway that this had pretty much set their dynamic in stone this moment and again like you get why you understand why because in this moment like kyo is like everything that is wrong in my life is your fault right like so of course he's like i'll never forgive you you're the reason why everything in my life sucks meanwhile it doesn't like honestly like kyo thinks that his life sucks if, if i'm being honest from the outside looking in yuki's life sucks just as bad like they both suck hard right they like their lives suck on toast in the early stages right until they meet toru but like they both have trials that they've been through but neither of them knows that right like yuki doesn't really get that kyo's had a hard life until akito rubs it in his face later and Kyo has no idea what, what Yuki's been through. Not a goddamn clue, at least not at this point, right? So, like, Kyo just says, like, I hate you, everything's your fault, I will never forgive you, and I, I you should just disappear, like, drop dead is basically what he says. And at some point, Yuki almost does, right? Um, but, like, man, okay. Even Yuki watching them from the car, Right? I was like, th like, Yuki watching them from the car was this moment where I'm like, man, I'm telling you guys, I really feel like Yuki wanted wants to be friends with Kyo. 
I've said that before, and people have been like, what? No, I was right. I was right, right? Because like this whole time, this whole time, everything Yuki did in the past was just to try to get Kyo to be his goddamn friend. Yuki meets with Kyo a second time by accident. Yuki tries to give this man his hat back. Kyo just runs over to Kazuma. And this is the this is what breaks Yuki, right? Like this is what makes Yuki like get hella sick. Like it, it breaks him. Like he bursts into tears, just like hu hugging the hat because the hat is a representation that all he wants is a goddamn friend, right? Like it just oh my god, Yuki just wants somebody to hold close. And the one time he gets friends, they get their mind wiped, right? Like the one time he gets friends, it's ripped away from him, which we already knew. But, like, it, we actually see that scene happen. Like, it, it, the whole thing plays out. Like, his soccer friends, it just... Oh, God. Um, but, this whole time, I was right. I was friggin' right, because Yuki says later in the present that I just wanted him to like me. For him to... Like, I wrote it down because I was like, I knew it! I knew it! Like, Yuki says, I wanted him to like me for him to be my friend. That's all I wanted. That's all he wanted! That's all he wanted! Damn, I'm gonna cry. That's all he wanted was a friend, goddammit. At this point, it's gonna be hard for them to be friends because so much bad has happened. Like, so much, so much has happened in their lives that have separated them for so long that them becoming friends is gonna be difficult. But don't forget, friggin' his best friend Haru hated Yuki. Hated him. Akito even tells him, like, just reminds the audience, like, by the way, Haru hated Yuki. And they're best friends now. Uh, I do think if Yuki wanted to, by the end of the series, because I can't see this happening until the end of the series, but I think that they could form a kinship of some kind. And I, I want that for them. I really do. But we gotta talk about the biggest thing. We gotta talk about, again, I called it! I knew it! I was right! God, it feels good to be right! Um, so, Yuki... Um, that, that scene that I talked about way earlier when Yuki like the mirror breaks and Yuki runs from the estate What is he wearing the hat who do, who does he happen to stumble into? Toru we knew that Yuki was the one who gave Toru the hat right like we knew this um, We also know that it was Kyo's hat So that's where the confusion lied right because for a long time I'm like wait it was Kyo's hat, but like Yuki is the one, like was Yuki the one who gave it to her? I'm so confused right, but now we know it's like no it, it, it was Kyo's hat but Yuki found it, and he gave it to Toru as a way to be like, you're okay now. Like, he gave away his, like, because that, like, you can almost assume that the hat is, like, a representation of, like, something that brings Yuki some form of comfort, and he gives that to Toru, somebody who seemed like they needed the comfort at the time. And then he runs off, right? Now, Yuki, like, it's funny, because Yuki doesn't stumble across Toru immediately. <laughs> He runs past her, and when he did, I was like, <gasps> like, like, my heart stopped. I was like, ah, baby Toru! <laughs> like, oh my god! Y y Yuki, run back! Right? I was like, oh my god. Um, but uh, he does not stumble across Toru right away. He actually stumbles across Kyoko. And it's long haired Kyoko, which breaks my heart because I'm like, Kyoko! <laughs> um, and Kyoko seems unbelievably distraught. And she even scares Yuki in a way that made me laugh, because she's like, if anything happens to Toru, I'm gonna break skulls, right? Because that's that's that, that's my girl, right? That's the Kyoko that we know, where she's like, I'm gonna break skulls if anybody's if anything happens to Toru, because Toru runs away, right? Like, or at the very least, Toru gets goes gets lost, and Kyoko's like panicking, and this scares Yuki, because obviously Kyoko be kind of scary. She's a bit of a Yankee, right? We know this. Um, God, I want to rewatch those two episodes where she meets, uh, where, where she meets, uh, Uo, because the, oh God, like, Yonki Kyoko, like, protecting Uo was, that, that, that friggin' two-part is great. Um, I love Kyoko so much, so seeing her in the episode made me all happy. But seeing the way that she scared Yuki, but then sort of impressed Yuki with how much she loves Toru was great, right? Because it's, like, this realization that, like, there are parents out there who, who do care, who are, like, who can't do love their children it's it's like something that yuki's not familiar with and god saying that out loud breaks my heart but basically yuki overhears what kyoko says and he runs back and he finds toru um and so he sees toru but he's too scared because he's already had like somebody be erased from his life right like forget him before right so instead uh because like they ran into him so he doesn't want 
Toru to bump into him and like see that he's the, the rat Zodiac. So instead he just bolts, right? He doesn't say anything. So there's no word shared between them. He just runs off, right? And he lets Toru chase him. Like he keeps like waiting for her. Once like he rounds a corner, Toru will like look around and then he'll sort of be there waiting and then he'll let her keep chasing him all the way back home. So he leads her all the way home and once they get there, he stops, lets her catch up and then puts the hat on her head. And like just basically giving away the one thing that, that he has to her, right? Gives her a sense of comfort and then bolts again and brings her back to Kyoko. And in that one moment, like it's this one moment where he actually feels like useful. Like the one time he felt like he was like he did something for somebody. And that kills me because this whole time Akito keeps telling him like you're useless, you don't like you're nothing, I don't, like nobody loves you, blah blah blah, everybody hates you, you're useless, you're useless, you're useless. And in this moment, Yuki helped somebody. He got to be useful just this one time. And Toru helped him feel that way. Like without even realizing that, this young Toru made him feel like somebody cared, right? Like somebody needed him in that moment. Somebody cared enough to need him, right? And even if nobody remembers, even if she forgets, he'll know that that happened and that's all he needed. And it's the like just the fact that it's the origin of the friggin' hat and it's it's this moment where Yuki like and Toru helped each other without even realizing how much they'd be needing each other in the future. This first meeting and it's so great. And this is the part where I say that I freaking knew it. This is the part where I was, that I was talking about. And I wrote it down because my God, Takei Sensei, absolute wordsmith. She accepted me time and again. She's beloved to me, like how the sky feels so close and yet so far, like a mother. I freaking called it. I knew it was a plat I knew it was platonic. I knew it, man. Like everybody assumes like, oh, it's got to be a shippy thing, right? And listen, like y'all know me. I'm king shipper, right? But I feel like sometimes we get lost in the fact that sometimes bro TPs, sometimes this platonic like I love you in the in a way that like I just couldn't be without you. It's not romantic. I don't want to kiss you. I don't want nothing like that. I don't want to hold hands, which is too lewd. You know, like it's nothing like that. It's just that now that you're in my life, I can't imagine you not being here. You know, like you mean the world to me without the need for it to be romantic. And the fact that he says that it's love like a mother, I knew it. Like I forget like this whole time, right? I was like, it's, clearly this way because Akito never gave him that. His own mother never gave him that. He never experienced that sort of like motherly love from anyone. And Toru is such a kind-hearted friggin' soul that th that's the moment that he got that type of affection and he is mortified of losing it. You know, like this idea that that she, ha like that he is so much greater now because she's there. Like, it was always this. Like, I know that there's Yuki Toru shippers, and I'm sorry, because your ship just friggin' sank. But I always knew this. And to me, it's so beautiful. It's even better this way. This is... Their connection, their bond, is so genuine. And it's so funny to me to think back to the beginning of the episode, and then look at this part of the... Like, look at this, the end of the episode, and think about the fact that that old bat said that that was a bond that Yuki and or that Yuki and Akito was there's going to be this strong bond when really it's not a bond at all it's a shackle on his leg Toru and Yuki have a genuine bond that's a true bond and they're like that scene was such a bombshell right because even though I I in my head I'm like it's gonna be this way I just know it even though I knew it was coming even though I called it it still shook me to hear him say that to our boy Kakaru. Like, it still shook me. And at this point, as for the future, I... Listen, as, as far as the future goes for Yuki, all I ask from Yuki is this, right? Yuki, you have to, at some point... I'm not saying right now, but the fact that you talked to Kakaru about this is great, and I'm glad you got it off your chest, and I'm glad you told us, the audience, but you have to confront all three of these people. You have to confront Toru, you have to confront Kyo, 
and you most especially have to confront Akito at some point. Although for that last one, you may wanna bring the Zodiacs with you. What do I mean by confront? Well, he should tell Toru. He doesn't have to. He doesn't necessarily have to confront Toru, but he should. He should tell Toru that, just so you know, that boy was me. That kid that you're talking about, that was me. He doesn't have to, but it'd be nice for her to get that closure on that story. Like, it'd be nice, and she deserves to hear how he feels, right? Like, like she needs to hear that, like, that she is there for him in, in the way that Kyoko was there for Toru, right? Like, Toru, like, Toru's motherly connection to Yuki makes him stronger. She deserves to hear that, because it'll make her happy. Kyo, confronting Kyo, by that I mean that you have to just, listen, man, like, you have to tell Kyo what your life was like and this is going to be the hardest thing for Yuki to do. You have to tell him that you just want to be friends. If you tell him that, I'm sure he'll laugh at you. <laughs> Kyo will laugh and be like, fuck you, right? Like, he will say, like, no. Like, he's going to say no. But tell him. If you reach out, the Kyo, the Kyo that you knew is very different to the Kyo that Toru has helped build. This Kyo might be like, listen, man, like, we will never be brothers you know, we'll never be super close because so much has happened. But I'm at like, but I feel like he'd be willing to like grab the olive branch. You know, like I feel like he'd be willing to be like, okay, it will take a long time, but I can see it happening. At least I hope so. And I feel like at the very least, you should tell him that you wanted to be friends. Even if you know that, even if you feel as though you can't, even if you know that you can't, at least tell Kyo, like, listen, like, I need you to know that when back then I wanted to be your friend. I just want them to be friends. That's that's what I, I just want them to be friends. That, that's what I want. And as for Akito, like I said, you may want to bring the Zodiac with you, but I feel like if Toru and the Zodiac and Kazuma and like all their family and everybody stand up together, maybe it'll be enough to, to push Akito back to be like, we don't need you. And everything you've ever told us has been a lie. We do matter, and your love is false. Like you're a, you're literally a false god. Every everything that you have told us is a lie. We are good. We are needed. We are useful, and we are loved. And you can basically take everything you've ever told us and shove it up your ass. That's what I think Yuki should do. Um, if it goes that way, I have no idea, but that's what I think he should do. Yuki, my my boy. I'm so proud of you. Like, the fact that he admitted this to Kakaru, and the fact that he's, like, he's gotten that off his chest, it's it's a good feeling. And my god, I definitely talked a lot this week, but it, it needed it needed to be said. And with that said, everybody, that is going to wrap up today's video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, then don't forget to boop that up snoot and share if you care. And, of course, as always, I have to give a big, big thank you to the good folks in the T-Squadron. Look at these beautiful people. Look at these beautiful names. And hey, if you would like to join these beautiful names floating across your screen, then there are two ways to do so. The first, of course, is by checking out that first link in the description to check out our Patreon page. And the other is by hitting that join button and joining the channel as a member, which scores you some extra goodies, like a cool badge next to your name and some emotes that you can use in the premiere chats. So once again, a big thank you to the good folks in the T-Squadron. Y'all are the real MVPs. And yeah, that's it for me. Uh, I am going to go, uh, I guess, I don't, oh, I'm, I actually got to get ready for a stream with Sun, which reminds me, if you guys have, if you didn't know, we have a Twitch channel. You can guys come hang out with me over on Twitch. It's a good time. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Jojo Talks Too Much. If you want to come hang out, it's always a good time. But until next time, you stay classy, Anytube, and wash your dang hands.